It speaks to the public and psychological state of shame and find great resonance in an era of growing discussions around gender, rape culture and consent. That's acclaimed visual artist Penny Siopis' iconic series of paintings titled Shame and a new film titled Shadow Shame Again. Siopis joins us now via Zoom to tell us more about her latest Shame series. Penny, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Now, give us a brief background into the Shame series, which was conceived in the early 2000s. Uh, the, the, the work actually came in the wake of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And the way that commission surfaced all manner of shame in everybody in this country, okay. but also stimulated thoughts about shame in a global context. And these are two works made nearly two decades apart. Unpack this for us. Well, when I first uh, started exploring shame in the context which I've just described, I focused mainly on painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, these paintings were small and uh, the mediums I used were, were very prone to being very expressive without being the conventional ways of depicting people or situations. And so they weren't, weren't realistic in that sense, but yes. more visceral. And, um, I, and I made many, many of them. So there was this idea that whatever experience was in one of the individual paintings was a relational experience to those that were in the group. So this idea mm. about the individual in the group came both uh, in the structure of the paintings um, and and in the, really in the way that the materiality of the paint was um, explored in all of them. So, so I started in painting because painting felt the most um, appropriate to explore the unspeakable aspect of shame, which really doesn't have uh, a particular face or particular voice I in that sense you can't pin it shame down but you can really know that you experience it and yes. it's, it can be very, very toxic but uh, we also know that that language can't hold shame you know words don't um, don't convey shame in the particular way that we might feel it through the body so I did use words in the paintings too but they were the rubber stamps that you get at craft shops which have these kind of cliched love uh, narratives like yeah. uh, hush little baby don't you cry uh, sorry um, you know and they were meant for a very different context to the way I I put them in relation to the uh, medium of the paint that was also very red and very fleshy and very emotional in a sense. And then I also used the idea of the raw shock blot, which, you know, uh, is, a, is a sort of splash or blot of colour. Uh, and, and it's used in the psychological context in which you, uh, you read this blot as the viewer and you imagine various things from its formless shape. And then the psychologist sort of reads what you've imagined as some kind of symptom. Now, I don't really go with that, but I, I thought the idea of a formless shape that you sort of becoming form might be very open in uh, enabling the, part, the viewer who is looking at the paintings to also identify with the scene that the, that the, the paintings are depicted. So yeah. those, it started with the painting, but then in 2005, uh, I was invited by the Freud Museum in London, which is Sigmund Freud's home uh, after he fled Nazi Vienna, so in the Second World War. And he didn't live, live there that long, but he moved his consulting room, the famous space where psychoanalysis was invented, to London. And now it's a museum. But it, uh, when I was asked in 2005 to make an intervention into the museum to make some art there, oh. I, I, um, it was during the, the it was the centenary of his very famous publication, three essays on the theory of sexuality, and I was thinking of shame obviously because I'd made the shame paintings, and also I read his book and then made a. a, 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 a and sorry to jump in there, Penny, but uh, back to the subject of shame. Uh, what yeah. is it about it that needed to be explored and what has been your observation of how society responds to shame? Well, so society responds to shame in, in, in ways which 
which affect people very negatively in, in that it's a, it's a sort of way of regulating society. And that uh, can be acceptable to some degree, but it's also not acceptable in other degrees. And that can cause a kind of toxic shame in people. It's often yes. felt early days in, in childhood experiences, and it often has a relationship with the, ch the child feeling inadequate and the child feeling that it's not that it itself or is to blame rather than there's something out there um, which they have done wrong and they can maybe rectify. So that was, people are often think of that being guilt rather. But shame feels as if you are the problem, you yourself, your internal self is the problem. And in South Africa, um, it's, it's a complex situation because it's, in, it's intermixed, not only South Africa, but it's, it's really often seen uh, in relation to women and children and mostly women because um, of the, the culture that we're in, the patriarchal culture which we're in, which casts women in, a, in, in many ways as the bearers of shame, the, the people who are shamed. And, and children uh, absorb that and obviously in some ways reproduce it. Yes. But shame is not, shame is not always, uh, or in my view, shame can be used to to not always be so, so toxic. Okay. And, uh, and speak to us, Penny, I'm afraid we're out of time, but uh, just speak to us briefly about the failure of language in addressing issues related to the shame that comes with gender-based violence, for instance, and uh, how you attempt to point that out in the film. Well, I think with the, the yes, in the film, it's, it's, the, there's text in the beginning and that sort of runs, there's a large, uh, opening text by by Puma Denea Polo that I've used, and she's written this book on rape, and it's a really powerful piece of uh, a paragraph which basically says everybody, all women, uh, pretty much are are affected by gender based violence, and then it goes becomes just two words and one word and no words, and the and these words are set against a series of images which are taken from home movies, um, old home movies. And there, there, there are scenes of uh, many, many scenes of women in in South Africa, but more globally. And they're they're cut in a way which feels very anxious at one stage. But they also put to sound, and then the sound starts taking over where the text is. Uh, the text is in the form of subtitles, okay. and then. Sound is first a woman singing, and then um, it's it's a choir singing, but it's all a cappella. So it's always almost like the the text gets given over, or the words are given over to singing to contain both the okay. shame and also the emotional part. And the shame series, Penny, has changed shape over the years, but the essence of it is still pretty much the same. Why do you think that's the case? I think that's the case because shame is with us. It's actually a human uh, emotion. It's the deep human emotion. Mm. And it's not an emotion that we should just let say it's sort of, because it's human, we shouldn't just think that's it. We're always shamed, therefore we can't change. So uh, it's a human emotion that can actually give us change. And giving out, thinking about our society, not only South Africa, but more broadly, and even thinking about the pandemic now, we know that when we reflect we can actually change. We need to reflect. So my feeling about shame, why, it's, why it's, I'm still interested in it, is that it's the grounds for empathy, actually. And okay. if you think you feel individual shame and you take on that individual shame and you acknowledge it, you must also know that other people feel shame. And instead of, as what happens in dehumanizing societies, instead of projecting onto those other people your shame and blaming them and and acting in a dehumanizing way. You could actually take it on and uh, act in a more empathic way. Um, but that's, so that's, that's what I think is the basis of empathy, to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And so also, you know, just in a larger social political way, um, I was always very aware of a phrase that I thought was powerful in terms of using a, a negative emotion or toxic emotion to some better good, um, was it, you know, uh, Karl Marx, used this uh, a phrase which I thought was very potent and it was cited in Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, uh, introduction to Rod Franz Fanon's uh, The Wretched of the Earth. And he said something like, shame is a revolutionary feeling. Yes, yes. And I thought yes. that's really powerful in the larger social idea of seeing shame as 
not debilitating and, and locking you into yourself, but rather the opening out to the you know, social world. You know, Penny, I quite like that point you made about, uh, you know, that element of, uh, you know, empathy and putting yourself in other people's shoes. And I suppose it ties in very well uh, with the discussion on shame. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Have a good day now. Now, award-winning visual artist Penny Siop is speaking to us about uh, her latest body of work titled Shame and a new film titled Shadow Shame Again, which are both concerned with the public and the psychological state of shame. Both con yeah, yeah, so this is Morning Live on SAPC. Let's take a short break. We'll have your sports news in a moment.